All right, here we go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my channel. This is brand new. Um, just starting this out, my name is Ricky, uh, also known as Astronome uh, on various places online, like Discord. Um, I'm an AOS player. Um, I have been playing Warhammer since way back in the day, probably around 2000. Um, some friends and I started playing Warhammer Fantasy uh, probably about the beginning of 5th edition in middle school. Um, I played Wood Elves, solely Wood Elves, for like a decade. Uh, a little bit of Vampire Counts in Warhammer Fantasy. Uh, I played some Malifaux, although I got out of gaming for a little while. And then during the pandemic, I got back into Age of Sigmar, mainly for the painting, uh, but have also come to really enjoy the competitive aspect. Um, I always claimed to not be very competitive back in the day, uh, but I definitely do enjoy uh, some good tournaments. And I'm taking AOS a little bit more seriously uh, on the competitive front than I did Warhammer Fantasy. So I have one or two friends who have channels where they talk about just game analysis uh, and things. Um, Alex Schmid in particular, I'll probably link his channel um, in the description of this video. Uh, check him out. He's got a bunch of videos, mainly about Malifaux and Ninth Age. Um, but regardless of whether you play either of those games, I always find it interesting to see the way a good player um, kind of think, thinks through the strategy and list building and all that sort of analysis. Um, so that said, I would not consider myself a great player. Um, but I'm going to be doing some list analysis for this first um, video, and hopefully it will be at least somewhat entertaining, if not all correct. Uh, basically, I'm going to be playing in a GT this weekend uh, in Baltimore, the Goonhammer Open, as you can see on the screen here. Um, it was a max of 32 players, and it's a little disappointing. They only got 15. Um, my impression of Goonhammer is it's more of a 40K site and community. Um, the 40K tournament has, I know the max was 128 people. I don't know how many they actually got. So, you know, four times as many as Age of Sigmar um, limit. Um, but we only got 15. So a little disappointing, but kind of, I don't know, fun to have a small field and it makes it easier to go through these lists now for this video. If I had twice as many to go through, it would be a very long video. Now, um, hopefully this won't be too rough. As I said, this is my first video, so bear with me. Um, and yeah, let's get started. So first of all, my list um, down here, Ricky Osteen, that is me. Uh, I'm playing OBR. I'm the only OBR player here. And I'm not playing the optimal OBR list, uh, but I'm playing a list that I hope will be good. Um, I did end up taking Null Myriad. Uh, I I want to take I want to be fun and take Mortis Praetorians. I also one of my one of the guys in my group. He was a very good gamer. Just keeps harping on me that he thinks Crematorians is amazing. Um, but I was I was too afraid of the number of Seraphon that I expected might show up and just did not want to get blown off the board in some number of games <laughs> by Seraphon. So I did end up going with the safe choice for Null Myriad, which is, I don't know, it's a little bit, a little bit of a, a wussy move, but that's all right. Um, Grand Strat, I ended up doing Scales Balanced. And the reason for that is that uh, unlike, unlike, so, sorry, I went to ATC. Earlier this year, uh, the American Team Championship with uh, a group of our people from Maryland. We had three teams there. Um, our team ended up coming in third through some shenanigans that I may talk about in another video, but we won't get into that here. Um, so the list I'm taking to this is a bit different than that list was. That was a little bit more of the traditional OER you see with the Six of Mortis Guard, the Bone Shaper, um, General. Um, you'll notice this list doesn't have Catacros. I don't own Catacros. I bought a huge OBR army, unpainted but assembled for like a great deal. And it had everything in it basically that I needed except Catacross. And I didn't feel like buying Catacross. So uh, Catacross is amazing. He's just so good. He provides so much utility, but I'm not running Catacross. What I do have, I'll just go through the list here. Um, I have the Soul Mason. Uh, I, it is, it is crushing to me that you cannot put the Soul Mason in the Andoran Acolyte Battalion. 
because uh, I love that battalion. I love getting extra primer lace. Um, I had that in my list for ATC, and I thought it was great. Um, but despite being a locust, the Soul Mason is technically mounted on his shitty little chair, so he doesn't go in that. If I'm a two drop, the Soul Mason is the random guy sticking out, not in the battle regiment. Um, but I like the Soul Mason because he can take Merciless Blizzard, and he still knows all the lore spells for OBR. And I think the OBR lore is amazing. And this is not controversial. Um, and you'll see in my list, I have I have two Death Rider units, because Death Riders are amazing. And I do have a unit of 20 Mortec Guard. And so the Soul Mason buffing the wound rolls to the Mortec and the Death Riders will be very nice. If you don't know how Soul Mason works, because most people don't run him, um, he's a two cast. And in addition to those two casts, uh, at the end of your hero phase, you roll a die. On a two to a five, you can cast his War Scroll spell which is the thing that gives plus one to wound to the Death Riders and the Mortec Guard. Um, he can cast that again, even if he's already cast it. And on a six, he can cast it two more times. But he could potentially be casting that, you know, two or three times in a phase if that's what you're prioritizing casting. Uh, I imagine that I'll probably be casting other things and then using just the extra cast to cast plus one to wound to something. Um, for example, if I'm just like throwing Death Riders into something. Um, but we'll see. Uh, so I mentioned the Bone Shaper is not my general. The reason for that is I wanted to make the Liege Cavalos the general, um, because he has Diversionary Tactics, which is the minus three to charge aura. And I feel like that's nice on a mobile hero. Uh, and the other the other thing with the mobility that's nice, he had, you know, not that OBR is short by any means uh, for command points, but the Liege Cavalos does get to issue a command uh, for free. Uh, every turn, and so with the 18-inch range from the general, and he's so mobile, uh, you know, he can be out running around handing out commands wherever he wants. Um, I I do really like the Leash Cavalos. I've I've tried to fit him into some lists. He didn't make it into the ATC list, but he's he's just another very mobile piece. I love the plus one attack command, uh, which you can get with him without having to take Catacross. Uh, if you're like me and you don't know the model for Catacross. Um, and I'll talk a little bit, but I think that synergizes very nicely with the Mortec Guard, too. Um, so yeah, got the Leash Cavalos. He's also another source of charge mortals in addition to the Death Rider. So I have three units that are doing five up mortals on the charge based on the charge roll, uh, which is nice. Um, I do have the Bone Shaper with the Artisan's Key. I, I feel like it's not super controversial that that's, you know, kind of the best item we have in the book. Um, Bone Shaper has Hoarfrost. Um, so he's got his War Scroll board clearing spell, which is nice. Uh, and as I said, the Soul Mason has Blizzard. And then we have good old Archon. I I have not had I've not had as much fun with the model in AOS in the two years I've been playing since uh, as I've had with Archon. Sorry. I he's just super mobile, which is great. Uh, 16 inch flying move base, and you can of course give the OBR command give him plus three moves. So you can be going 19 inches and still charging. Um, obviously, OBR also has all sorts of you know little movement things with retreat and charge and that sort of thing. Um, he's a three cast. Yeah, not cheating. Three cast at plus two. And plus two to dispel and unbind, which I think is super nice. Uh, and just like Catacross, he does the heal three to three units. Um, and it's fantastic. And his War Scroll spell is one of the most fun spells in the game. It can do absolutely nothing, or you can do 12 mortals to, you know, your your friend's keeper in your basement, which may have happened fairly recently. <laughs> uh, so that's the hero setup. Um, for units, as I said, I have two units of Death Riders. Death Riders are amazing. They open up a battle tactic. You can slap a Mystic Shield on them and throw them into something. You know, that's... 15 wounds there on a base four up. Um, there are obviously things that can shoot through that, but they're fast enough that you can be throwing them into something that they won't immediately die. They also just make a good screen if you need a good screen. Um, I've got two Morgast Archai. I wish I had more. <laughs> wish I had more Morgast. It's right there in the name. You need more gas, man. Uh, wish I had more of them, but I can't fit more in this list, um, unfortunately. They're just fantastic. Turning off commands in three inches is so good. And they can whiff a little bit. You know, they only have six attacks. 
but they can also randomly spike and do like 15 damage, uh, which is fantastic. Um, as I said, I have 20 more tech guard. That's probably one of the more controversial things in this list. Um, I have played, I played this list or something very close to it. I don't think I had the soul mason twice. And more tech guard are just such a nice target for Horfrost and also a good target for the Liege Cavalos' plus one attack. If you look at it, the, you know, just think about maximum extra damage. Um, the Mortec Guard with plus one attack, that's 20 extra attacks. Two of those are on models with two damage attacks. The, you know, the rest are just on the normal guys. So that's potentially 22 extra damage coming out of the Mortec. Uh, that's before you factor in the exploding hits from being OBR and maybe having empowered Natarite on them as well. Um, it's just, it, you, you can, ju you can juice that Mortec Guard unit up to be very nasty. You know, Horfrost, you roll a one or two, sure, suddenly instead of wounding on fours or hitting on fours base, you know, they're hitting or wounding on two up. Or if you roll the three, suddenly they're on Ren three, you don't have to use Bludgeon, you can use All Out Attack instead um, to go to threes and fours, or maybe threes and threes if you have the um, Soul Mason spell on them. And with 60 attacks, can you can really tear through some things. I the one of the test games I played, they chewed through most of a unit of Hearthguard Berserkers, uh, fifteen Berserkers, I should say, to so thirty wounds. Um, so they you know they chewed through like eight or nine of those, even through a four up ward save before uh, the Hearthguard got to attack them. And I was like, damn, all right, this works out. Of course, most things aren't as slow as as dwarves and the Mortec Guard are pretty slow, but there, there's enough fast elements in this list that um, I hope they'll be able to do some work. And then finishing off, um, I do have three Immortus Guard. This is like probably the most controversial part of the list. Everybody takes six and they're amazing. They're, they're, they're just ridiculously good. I'm I'm not going to make any bones about it. Uh, ha, bones, there we are. Um, Immortus Guard are ridiculously good. They probably need another little nerf. I don't know if they need to go up 10 points or maybe uh, nerf their um, nerf resing them to like a, a four up instead of a three up. But I, they probably still need a little bit of a touch there <laughs> to tone down the Immortus Guard. Um, so I don't have the block of six, so they're not going to be like my main hammer or anything like that. But I did at least want three uh, for the bodyguards. So, you know, bodyguard, five wounds onto them, 10 wounds res back one or two. Um, it's still very useful to have even just three, I think, uh, even if you're not running the full block of six. And then, of course, uh, I have the Nightmare Predator. So just one more way to reach out with magic and get some heroes that are like hiding behind, um, hiding behind units and things like that, where you can't actually see them to target with the other spells. You don't need to see with an endless spell. You just check it back there and move it over them and do some wounds. Um, it's got the double tap, um, so you can potentially do 2d3 or even 1d3 and 1d6 to one target. It's a very good spell. Uh, and then probably the thing I was least sure about, I actually did not bring the Bone Tithe Nexus to ATC. Because the thing is just on such a huge base, and I hate fitting it into my deployment zone and messing up the rest of my deployment and just having to think about where I'm going to drop this, like, an eight by eight, nine by nine inch, whatever it is, massive piece of terrain. Um, but it is good. You you have the option to hand out minus one to hit, so hit to something. You have the option to hand out minus three to charge to something with an 18. The four up, you know, on average, you'll get it half the time. It never feels like you get it half the time. It's one of those things where it feels like you get it a quarter of the time. Uh, but I looking... Looking at the the pack for this event, which I guess I should pull up, um, it look you know there's unlike the last GHB, there's nothing with a really truly tiny deployment zone in this one. So I, I felt comfortable enough to taking it, and also basing that on like where the the, the terrain map they published, it, it just seems like seems like there will be places to put it. So that is my list. As I said, it's a battle regiment, and then one uh, one hero couldn't fit, so it's a two drop. Um, I went back and forth about this a little bit. I 
you know, my friends talked me down from switching out to like Warlord and Wizard Finder, something stupid. Better to be lower drops. Looking at the field for this uh, this tournament, we'll see. Um, as I'm going here, I'm like, maybe I'm going to need to split this into two videos. So maybe in the next video, we'll see. Um, but looking at the other lists, it two, being a true drop turned out to be a great decision because there are a lot of lists that are in the like three or four drop range to this tournament. Um, I believe there's one other that's two, and there, there might only be one one drop, actually. So being able to control going first or second is going to be very big because, in my opinion, one of the biggest things in OBR is you just don't want to get doubled. So you're not so much looking for the double yourself, but you want to make sure that after every turn your opponent takes, you get the chance in your hero phase to heal yourself back up. That's, you know, this is not like esoteric wisdom. I hope that makes sense. Um, obviously, there are times where you do take the double. If you can close out the game, you know, take that two to three double, sure, that's great. Um, but being a lower drop, just make sure that you're not going to get doubled one to two by the Iron Jaws, you know, some, you know, KO, something like that. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think I'm going to wrap this up now and just end this with going over my list. Um, in the next video, maybe I'll stitch these together. I have never done video editing, but we'll see. Um, I'll go over the, the player pack for the tournament. So I'll, I'll just read through quick what the scenarios are, and then I will go through the other lists here. Um, yeah, thank you. I hope I hope you enjoyed these random AOS thoughts. I've just, I've really been enjoying thinking about strategy and army list building, all that sort of stuff. So. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming on this journey with me. Uh, hopefully I'll be making some videos semi-regularly. Uh, we will see. But yeah, until next time.